We're gonna wait just a minute or so to make sure everybody's online, but I've got a really nice assortment of songs and a really nice assortment of sawtooth acoustic guitars. Uh, they are amazing. Now what I wanna do in this is I'm gonna play some songs that uh, you know. And uh, for example, I wanna play the rhythm part of No Boundaries uh, because every part of the song No Boundaries was written out. Uh, every note uh, meant something in the song. And even the underlying acoustic guitar track, which I played actually with a clean guitar, but I wrote it on acoustic. Uh, I wanna start off with a version of uh, a song that's one of my favorites. I like to consider it almost like an original. It's called The Watchtower. I think we're ready to go. Are you ready, Austin? Looks like we're gonna see how the chat sounds like the chat. Okay, cool. All right, now I can't see questions today, everybody, but I wanna do a few shout outs. Uh, I'm hoping Denny's online, uh, if you're there, and Nick and uh, Ben and uh, Alexis, I hope uh, you're online too, and a whole bunch of other people that follow these uh, weekly lessons. This is gonna be a great clinic. Sawtooth makes incredible acoustic guitars. One of the best ways to tell if a guitar is good, besides intonation, is the depth of the low end. And here, let me show you. Okay, let's rock, let's do it. This is the Watchtower.
Hi, thank you. Now, this song was played with a jumbo maple uh, sawtooth guitar. I want you to see the back of this guitar. <clears throat> Check this out. The flame maples rule. Look at that. It is absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> and the guitar has so much low end. I just love it. Now, they make two series of acoustic guitars. They make the maple series and the mahogany. I'm going to switch guitars now and play the mahogany series. So. Okay, make sure I don't hit anything here. Yes. Now also too, there's a built-in uh, Fishman preamp system in virtually every one of the guitars. I'm gonna be playing a ukulele too. These ukuleles are bad, and I love them. And uh, that doesn't have a Fishman, but it's got a really nice preamp in it. But all of them have tuners too, and I can put this on. But I like to use a tuner as a kill switch. So that's why you're not hearing uh, the sound of the acoustic uh, as you would normally hear it when I play, because it's just off. Okay. Anyway, this is my song called No Boundaries. And I want to play a little bit of that. I'm going to segue into another one of my songs called Peace. Now, when I studied music, there was something in the 1800s, the 19th century, uh, where composers, they were called tone poems. And composers actually thought that they could depict a, like a stream in a forest through music. And I'm thinking, well, let's picture a stage diving metal scene, whoa! But anyway, on this song, Peace, what I tried to do is depict, it is a tone poem in my mind. It was about, I, I pictured like England 500 years ago and this village that was really peaceful. And then all of a sudden, you know, li like you knew because everything was walled off, you knew that there was going to be a battle. And then the battle ensued in um, everything good, Austin? Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I'll make sure. Anyway, so then when the battle uh, ensued, that was the middle part of the song and it got really crazy. And then it goes back because the villagers won. And so what happened was it starts off peaceful and it ends peaceful. And the song is called Peace. So here we go. No boundaries, segueing into peace. <laughs>
I love playing this guitar. This is one of the first guitars from Sawtooth that I got. It's called uh, a Jumbo Mahogany. And again, it's got that Frisch Fishman preamp system. And uh, we are going to also be doing a lot of MAV signature guitars coming up. And we are doing some really innovative things with pickups. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Now I'm gonna switch guitars here. We have a lot of guitars to play. So I have to get up, set this down. Now, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, out of the thousands and thousands of shows I've played in my life, this is the second time ever I've just done an all acoustic show. So, and the first one was in front of people. And so, uh, this is uh, quite a uh, different experience for me as well. Now, um, when I was a kid, I, I loved the band Yes. And, and I liked a lot of bands, but I was into very progressive music. Like, it was in 4-4, four, four, man. Like, I didn't want to hear it. Like, it was in 5. That's cool. It was like... I didn't like anything. I was like, if it's not a mixed meter... I don't want to hear it. I was totally progged out. If you could dance, prog meaning progressive, if you could dance to it, I wanted nothing to do with it. And so, but what I did was, I loved the band, yes. And, and it's funny because I didn't actually have a lot of their records um, because when I was a kid, I had records and cassettes and stuff. And, uh, but I just loved the guitarist, Steve Howe. I thought he was really great and he was really innovative. And he wrote a song called Mood for a Day that I really loved. And, and when I was 16 years old, a great guitar player friend of mine, Mark McNally, who co-wrote the song Eight Pillars of Steel, um, wrote an, uh, like a, it was like a, uh, an acoustic piece that sounded Baroque to me. And between Mark and Steve Howe, I said, I can do that. I can do this too. So I wrote this song and it is called A New Day. Now, uh, I am playing what's called a Dreadnought Mahogany. Uh, this is a really beautiful guitar. So here we go.
That was fun. Thank you. Now, it feels so weird playing all this stuff without people in front of me, but I've got Austin. So, you know what I think, Austin? I think you need to cheer and just go, dude, that was like rad, dude, it was rad. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's fun. So, uh, I'm just happy that uh, these online shows have been going on now uh, and uh, the lessons. You know, I really appreciate all the support. And, uh, I cannot say enough about sawtooth guitars. I mean, listen, I mean, just the guitars. You know, they have all these great acoustics, and these are record quality recording acoustics. I mean, the, you know, a lot of uh, the song A New Day has, you know, third. And so, like, you know, just the intonation on the guitar is really great. Now, um, when I was a kid, I'm going to change guitars again. And I want to play a different guitar for each song. So hang on one second. Let's put this down. There we go. Okay. Just making sure it's all in tune here. Uh, that's what I usually do. When there's a not locking tremolo on an electric, I like hit those all those strings hard. Now, um, sorry. Yeah, we are in my studio now, and uh, I, you know, I've shown people that it is actually. It's like a finished basement. I mean, it's huge. It's bigger than most, uh, a lot of apartments. But um, the weather is really nasty today. So it was nice and sunny before. And then now it's, uh, it's going to rain pretty heavily. So, so things change. Now, when I was a kid, I actually started on guitar playing jazz. And we used to do songs like, Miss, like uh, Stormy. I was 11 years old playing stuff like that. And then I learned C6. And then... But you won't know what? I didn't feel cool going on stage going... And I remember girls at the time said, We don't like that. That's like two... So what I did is I changed my style dramatically and went rock and metal because that's where the people went and I, I took the path of, and also I liked it too because you know I thought the aggression and power of metal and of rock music uh, was something that just could not be denied. But I also learned a lot of things like I studied like just simple songs like Breezer. I did too. Um, my metal method programs are extremely popular. That's my instructional programs. I have 13 different instructional programs and one of them is called 25 Jazz Progressions where what I do is I take, you know, music is a number system. So I take like a one, six, two, five progression. And what I did was I play the first part as a normal progression and the second part as a substitution. For example, this. Then I go. So it's in the key of G, G major 7, E minor 7, A minor 7, D9, D9 sharp 5, then a G6, D9, A major, A minor 7, Another D9, and then A minor 11, G7 flat at 5, G major 7. That's a lot of yeah, 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 yeah. To just watch how little my fingers move and how much the sound changes. And I said this with G6. I didn't mean D9. This is actually C sharp to minor 7. Then... So 
the sounds of jazz uh, are, are so much different than rock. And, and I mean, you can't, they're, they're so very different. Uh, but what I did in these 25 jazz progressions, if anyone's interested in learning about jazz, uh, it is a great uh, comprehensive program. You just take one of the progressions a week. There's 25 of them. And some are really hard. Like when you get into minor, here's a minor seventh, here's a minor eleventh chord. And so, and then you have these things like augmented eleventh. It's a weird sounding chord. But it's a great chord to work on. You actually have to use your thumb to bar. But these are all part of the 25 jazz progression. Now one of the things that I used to love about jazz, um, even though I played more rock, I still, even today, I, I'm just blown away at, at some of the, the young people that play jazz today. And also, you know, the greats, the, the Pat Martinos, the Joe Passes, and, and McCoy Tyners, and, you know, just so many people uh, that came before pretty much anybody is that's watching this. But anyway, I used to do songs in jazz chords. And there was a really famous song that my mom liked a lot called Misty, because she liked Johnny Mathis. Oh, he's got such a beautiful voice. Uh, Google Johnny Mathis. He's really amazing. And uh, so anyway, he did a song that was very popular called Misty. So I did a jazz version of this, and it's a really nice chord progression. And so, and I'm playing it on what's called a mahogany mini jumbo guitar by Sawtooth. But I mean, listen. This is a smaller guitar, it's a mini drum. But, but I mean, listen to the intonation on that, it's just so beautiful. I mean, these guitars are really great. And uh, you can hear it, I don't have to keep yakking about it. But anyway, here is my interpretation of the great song called Misty. Now I'm also using a classical guitar footstool and, and sitting like a classical guitars. But here we go, um, Misty. Now, one of the things that I used to love growing up um, is the idea just that uh, I loved acoustic guitar, and I've been playing it a long time. And like I said, I've never featured it that much uh, other than on my uh, songs in the background. But I used to love to do just little finger-picking things like, you know... that I loved about Blackbird, and this is where my music theory comes in. Um, when you hear things by Johann Sebastian Bach, for example. When you hear 
hear that, that's invention number four. It's actually in D minor. Uh, it's a two-part invention by Bach. But when you listen to McCartney's song Blackboard, watch this. This is some of the voicing. It is so brilliant. And this is why I think the Beatles are uh, so famous. And because their music is not only great, and for young people who even are uh, that uh, much in tune with the Beatles, which I've met, unfortunately, uh, quite a few, this is one of the things that makes the Beatles special. Just this part here. Okay, that's cool. But this next part is this. Watch. This is two-part writing at its finest. You have a chromatic bass line. goes right back down and the voicings on top it's called contrary motion there's parallel motion that's parallel but contrary means that it's moving separately from the notes below it this is contrary motion two-part writing at its absolute finest in it it's every bit as good as Bach and anybody who has ever lived now when I first heard Paul McCartney taught. I was like, how can this dude like write this stuff? I mean, he doesn't sound like Einstein. He's not like, you know, yes, calipointialism, sonata allegro form. He's not like that. He's just this guy that just happened to have this extreme talent. And that's the way it is. You know, just because someone has a degree, I mean, I have a degree in music, but it doesn't mean that I'm a better artist or, or a better player. It just means I know stuff. And so, but when I heard this, see, then it goes. It's genius. It is actually, it's genius two-part writing, and that's why I love it. So this is some of the background that I have on acoustic. I used to just love to play different things, you know, like a... I just love a lot of different things about acoustic. Now, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to play something that I didn't even know I could do. Um, Sawtooth makes incredible ukuleles. So check out this little bad boy here. They call this a concert electric ukulele. Now, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> sounds bad and so um i've never actually i've had a couple ukuleles i have one from tahiti i had one called a surf -lele. when we were little kids um uh, my family is from northern california a lot of them and so uh what i used to do is go visit my grandmother uh, when i was i was 10 years old the first time i went to san francisco she was like this hippie she had super long hair I mean, really, and she tied it in a bun, kind of like Princess Leia. And so, but she had this big mouth, and she let it down one time. I'm like, Grandma, your hair is like really long, man. And she's like, she didn't say too much, like, yes. And then it's the ir irony of it all is that she used to say that we're like this much Cherokee. Now, we cannot corroborate that, and we think that it's true, but, you know, you can't just say you're this much. You know, but my grandmother uh, had this super long, super thick hair, and she comes to Chicago, and, you know, I'm still a kid. I'm, I'm like 16 years old. My hair is really long. There's pictures of me online. My hair is, like, longer than it is right now. And, and she, she looks at me, she goes, what did you do to your hair? I'm like, Grandma, why? And she goes, you should just put a feather in your bonnet. You look like your ancestors. I'm like, what? She hated my hair. She goes, get a haircut. I go, what about your hair, Grandma? She goes, that's my hair. I'm a woman. She goes, you need to cut your hair. So I thought the, the irony of it was, uh, did not get a nose. But anyway, getting back to this, we, my dad knew I had just started a guitar, and he bought this thing called a surf -a Now, it was shaped like this. I've actually looked at them online and there were some money. Uh, there were four strings and tune like this, but I broke one of them. But what we used to do, I had this old 67 Camaro. See, my mother had a, had a 67 Camaro. 
And uh, when I was old enough to drive, I she gave me that car. This thing was bad. 327 V8, bucket seats, the whole nine yards. And it even had seat belts. I had someone argue with me about it. There's two types of seatbelts with this. This There weren't shoulder harnesses, just this regular seatbelt. But me and my friends used to always drive around in this car. And I kept this surf in the car because my friend Mark McNally, he used to play guitar too. So all my guitar playing buddies would play this surf But it's very much like this. I mean, it's tuned, but this sounds a heck of a lot better. But I, so I have a lot of experience playing this four string deadly thing. But anyway, I wanna play a little bit, uh, just goofing around on this. So this is the first time ever I've done an acoustic show like this online. Like I said, I did one other acoustic show, uh, but it was in front of a lot of people in an auditorium. So this is really a first for me, but it's the first time ever playing uh, a ukulele in front of anybody, uh, other than that surf lately when we were 16 year old kids. So here we go. this little thing and you know again I'm gonna show you guys how cool this guitar looks up close oh you can't see it all right anyway but check out the wood on this bad boy it is absolutely beautiful I mean they call it a concert electric and for a very good reason I mean the intonation rules uh, it just sounds really full and thick and uh, I was just inspired to goof around now one of the things when you heard this or this. When I was a kid uh, in high school, I auditioned for everything. I was in the jazz band, but I was also uh, the guitarist that played in, in anything and everything that I could. So our high school did a, a, a show and we did 
Fiddler on the Roof, and it was the musical Fiddler on the Roof. And so I played mandolin, I played all the guitar, I played all these different things, but this is part of Fiddler on the Roof, that, that. Or. I just love those melodies, and especially this, like, see, see you don't expect. And it just takes me right, like I feel like I'm in the Middle East when I hear that, or, or like in Greece or somewhere. And uh, you know, if you know the story of Fiddler on the Roof, Tevya. And, and, uh, but I really loved uh, being in that musical. And uh, I was in a lot of them, like Jesus Christ Superstar, I mean, you name it. I, I played a bunch of things over the years. And this is actually the first time I get to talk about some of my, my background. Now, I'm gonna switch to a guitar that's pretty bad, meaning good. Okay, this, what's that? Oh, thank you, thank you. Austin's my, my cheerleading squad. So you see, in my head, I'm hearing a lot of applause. See, after I play like, dude, you rock, dude, or like in concert, whoa! When I first played my double guitar, I gotta say this, I was playing uh, you know, opening up for Aerosmith, and I'm playing this double, and I just saw people in the audience going, wah, wah, and I'm like, what possesses somebody to go that crazy? Like, why is, like, I'm asking myself, like, what are you thinking about when you go, wah? I'm like, I don't know, man. But all I know is I'm playing like this, and like I goof around saying, what am I thinking of, Del Taco or Taco Bell? So who knows? But I love this guitar. This Again, the intonation, you know, everything about this song is great. So I'm going to play a little bit of a, just a, a little bit of a jam for you. And then I'm going to play a little bit of the Nitro song, Long Way From Home.
Yes, what a 12 string. I love this guitar. <laughs> Thick sounding and it's not easy to keep 12 strings in tune and once you tune them up listen to the intonation you just can't fake that um, this is these are the best sounding acoustic guitars I have played uh, throughout my entire career with any endorsement uh, that I've ever had I own uh, as, as you know I have in my collection Right now, it's over 170 guitars because I just uh, got all these. Uh, but I can say safely that I've been with two major companies before uh, Sawtooth, and neither one of them could get anywhere close to these guitars. None of, ne no way. There's absolutely no way. And, and then when you consider what they cost, the price points, the website is sawtoothworld.com. We have a lot of new signature guitars, but I cannot say enough about this company. We, we have really great people. Um, you know, I have a rule in life. I've never been a lone wolf, even though a lot of people know me as playing solo shows. Solo shows backed up by a lot of great people. Uh, I believe in, they call it this mastermind alliance. I think that Wolves don't hunt alone. Wolves are one of my favorite animals on planet Earth. They hunt in packs. You, you align yourself with the best people you can. You know that I, I've said this in other uh, lessons, that if you're the smartest person in the room, you are in the wrong room. Um, I never profess to say that I'm the smartest person in the room in, in certain subjects. In certain subjects, I am the smartest person in the room. But I want to be... Uh, uh, associated with people who are smarter at what they do than I could ever be. And uh, I can't say enough about soft tooth guitars. Now I want to play one last song for you. And uh, this one, hang on, set that bad boy down. We're back to the original maple guitar. Now this is uh, the jumbo maple, but I want to just uh, go over a few things with you that, um, hang on. Just make sure we, it's all in tune here. I'm a tuning fanatic. And like I said, these are really high quality Fishman uh, pickups. So there's a tuner on here, but I have a tuner on the floor that, that uh, uh, substitutes as a kill switch. So, uh, you know, I can use that as well. But I just like to make it in tune for you. But um, this jumbo maple guitar, uh, I can't, it's just, I can't say that. I mean, you hear the low end. See, that's how you judge guitars. You know, anybody can make, you know, uh, an acoustic guitar and say, oh yeah, it's a, you know, it looks pretty, it sounds good, but it's the low end that separates the bad boys from the not so bad boys. And so I really love playing this guitar. <laughs> play for you the acoustic version of the blues. So here we go. Let's rock.
In closing today, uh, I want to thank each and every one for coming out uh, tonight and, and being uh, on these really great uh, Facebook live chats. And tonight we're doing a multi-stream on YouTube too. But um, I hope you got something out of this tonight that, you know, I have a, a pretty immense background in music. And uh, it's, you know, I don't, you know, my dad used to always say, Son, it's better to be a master of one than a player of many. And so that's why I never, always didn't showcase everything that I know uh, about guitar. You know, just, just the things that you've known me through over the years. But what I can tell you is this, that uh, I love playing acoustic guitar. Sawtooth makes absolutely the best acoustic guitars that I've ever been associated with. And I've been associated with two Pretty big company. Sawtooth is bigger than both of them. And uh, they have a great company called Chromacast. They have a retail music store called Go DPS Music. This is a bad boy company, uh, conglomerate. And uh, I just love playing these guitars. They're inspiring to play. They, they stay in tune great. Um, and see, I'm down in the bottom level of my house. So like I said, it's gonna be a massive rainstorm. So I wanted to make sure I'm a tuning fanatic that sometimes when it gets a little colder, things go a little sharp, that's just normal. Uh, but uh, these guitars are fantastic. Also too, I have a new record that's being released. You can see the video now, The Badlands. And let me explain to you a little bit about my new record called More Machine Than Man. I've always gone by feeling. And then, but you know, you open yourself to criticism when you call yourself more machine than man. So let me tell you how I think about that title. I think about the machine part having the technical facility to be able to play what I want. And I think about the man part of being able to put all the feeling and all the things that I want to put in the music. This latest record is a culmination of a couple years of extreme living for myself. And, uh, you know, I've talked about it in other uh, classes here and online about some of the things that I personally went through. But what I can tell you about this record, I don't want to be a copy of myself. So, yes, I could have released Intermezzo the second or I could have released No Boundaries the second. You know, I'm totally capable of doing that. That's production, the songwriting. But what I did, for example, the first video, The Badlands, you know how much fun that's going to pl be playing live. Boom, do, 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 boom, do, 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 do. It's a jam song. It's a jam song. And I wanted the rhythms and the lead guitar, the bass and the drums to stand out. So, you know, when the chorus part came in uh, that I consider with the arpeggios, I could have added keys. I could have added embellishments to make the sound fuller. But I wanted it raw and in your face. And let me tell you my inspiration for that. Black Sabbath 13. Because if you listen to Ozzy solo records, especially the later ones, they've got every effect known to man on the vocals. I mean, they flanged it. They phased it. They reverbed it. They delayed it. You might as well mute it because you can't even tell what's going on. And so everything is like the swirling dervish. And so I thought, and then when, when, uh, Black Sabbath got together and they did Black Sabbath 13. It was stripped down. It what because what was Black Sabbath? One guitar, one bass, one vocal, one pair, one drums. And so uh, one drums, that doesn't sound grammatically correct, but you understand what I mean. In other words, it was stripped down to its bare essence. That's what more machine than man is about. The machine part is yes, I can still play. Uh, with a great technical facility like I could when I was younger. But the man part is the feeling. And all these songs are stripped down so you hear the rhythms in your face. Not even reverb, just totally dry. And then the drums and Chris Adler, uh, guest appearance on, on several of the songs. So did Victor Wooten. He played a great bass solo uh, in, in one of the songs on the album. And so... What I wanted to do is make this record different. Even the way I play, I'm playing super fast passages. I'm going, do, 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 wee. In other words, uh, you know, people always talk about phrasing. Well, what the heck is phrasing? I've showed this a bunch of times. Okay. So what is phrasing? Rhythm. That's how phrasing is. Rhythm. Rhythm. 
adding rhythm. It doesn't mean, you know, it's kind of like uh, I've been doing a lot of interviews for this, uh, for my new album. And somebody asked, well, what do you think about being labeled a shredder? And let me tell the people out here, the word virtuoso, I, I actually asked the person that asked me the question, I turned around and used a philosophical uh, way to talk to people, and I asked, I answered the question with a question. I said, what do you think the word virtuoso means? And they said, oh, you know, it's great. You know, see, we think of a virtuoso today as this just magnificent artist that can play anything, and we ascribe all these qualities to him, feeling and all that. Guess what? Wrong! You know what a virtuoso was 150 years ago? An insult! It said, all you can do is be technically proficient at your instrument. How do I know this? I have the Harvard Dictionary, and I keep it in my house, and I refer to it. But I've known this my entire life. See, we, so always there's a critic that can't do what the player can do. So the only thing, it's even online, you know, you read, you know, you, I, I even get it too. You know, 95% are good comments, but some of these comments, you know, Randy Rhodes wrote these riffs. You could never write this. And just because you can play fast. And, and I'm like, do you actually know where I'm coming from there? You know, the, and, it's, and I played it great. You know, so it's not the performance. See, if somebody said, you know, I don't really, I, I appreciate your performance. I just don't care for it. See, I can take that. But when somebody just rants and raves like an idiot, I just discount that. And it's kind of like when people, see, when critics tried to say shred is a bad word or a shred dead, young guitar players now are better than any generation I've ever seen. The What shred, see, I never heard uh, my style be associated with the word shred uh, until later in life. You know what my goal was to be in music? to be the best that I could be technically and musically, to play with my fingers what I heard in my head. If you want to call it shred, and this is what I told the interviewer, call it shred, I could care less. Because, see, Mozart, Haydn, Shostakovich, Liszt, Chopin, all had to deal with the same stuff. See, because there's always a critic out there that wants to criticize what an artist does. So when you get criticism like that, you're in the league. Because you know nobody can get 100%. But see, the idea that somebody just plays fast, that, that's an idea that's been around centuries. They used to call it a virtuoso. Then they tried to call it shred. Uh, if you say shred is dead, I'll say think what you want. But 100 years from now, some of these great guitarists that were quoted as shredders are still going to be amazing. Now, why do I say that? Does it have anything to do with acoustic guitar? No, but it has to do with the Michelangelo Badia philosophy on life. You go for it, whether it's acoustic electric. Uh, I've never done a, a show like this before. Uh, literally, like online, no audience. Uh, I've only done one acoustic show, but I, I said, you know what, let's go for it. And, and uh, so I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank uh, a couple other people uh, that are online here. Again, I, I talked about Ben. I talked about uh, Denny. Uh, I, I want to talk to uh, Joe, there's Rusty, there's Tanya, there's Mickey, there's uh, a lot of other people, but I want to just say thanks to each and every one of you for keeping this alive. I'm going to be on tour, but I highly recommend my new album, More Machine Than Man. Vinyl, cassettes, CDs, downloads, my video's out now, and it's done by, if you know uh, the person online named Guitar Max, Max and I are very close friends. We've been friends for a long time. He's the one who filmed the video and edited it. He's a great guitarist, uh, and he's also uh, great with video. But anyway, I want to say this. I'm Michelangelo Badio for Sawtooth Guitars, Chromacast Musical Products, and remember, Rat Pack Records, more machine than man, 